Over the last five years, public awareness of the environment has substantially increased. CFC emissions and ozone depletion are regular news headlines. Rover are continually improving the environmental performance of both its business and its products. In 1987, the Rover 800 was the first British car to be offered in the UK with a catalyst. This was followed in 1991, when Rover won a major business award for not only reducing the use of CFCs in its products, but also in its daily operation. The latest step along the environmental path is the introduction of a new CFC-free air conditioning system. Not only is it better for the environment, but coupled with a new generation of charging station, the refrigerant R134A can be recycled and used again and again. From August 1992, all air conditioning systems fitted to the Rover 200-400 series and the Rover 800 will be CFC-free. The old R12 system will gradually become a thing of the past as R12 will no longer be available from 1995. During the next 30 minutes, we'll take a look at the changes the introduction of R134A has brought about. We'll demonstrate the new equipment you'll need to work on these new systems. Finally, we'll round up by taking a quick look at fault diagnosis. Let's start, though, by looking at how an air conditioning system operates. The main components of the system are the compressor, the condenser, the receiver dryer, the thermal expansion valve or TXV, and the evaporator. We'll start at the compressor. The compressor performs two important functions. Firstly, as its name suggests, it compresses the refrigerant, which in turn increases its temperature. It also acts as a pump pushing the refrigerant around the system. One important point to note about the compressor is that it should only receive vaporized refrigerant. If liquefied refrigerant were to get into it, it could cause serious damage. The hot compressed vaporized refrigerant leaves the compressor and enters the condenser, which is mounted in front of the radiator. The refrigerant enters the top of the condenser. As it travels through the matrix, it's cooled by ran air and gradually turns into a liquid. At this stage, the refrigerant is at a high pressure. Leaving the condenser, it travels towards the receiver dryer. The receiver dryer performs no less than five tasks. Firstly, it acts as a reservoir, holding a small quantity of refrigerant in reserve until it's needed. It stores any refrigerant that hasn't changed into a liquid until it does so. It acts as a filter, removing any impurities from the system. It removes any moisture from the liquid refrigerant. And finally, it features a sight glass to help when diagnosing a fault in the system. The refrigerant leaves the receiver dryer in what's called the liquid line and travels towards the thermal expansion valve, or TXV. The TXV performs two important functions. Firstly, it lowers the temperature of the refrigerant by causing a rapid drop in pressure. It does this by allowing the refrigerant to flow from a small diameter pipe and into a large diameter pipe. The second task it performs is to regulate the amount of refrigerant it allows to pass through. It does this by sensing the temperature of the evaporator outlet and opening and closing its needle valve accordingly. If it senses a high temperature, it will give a large opening. A low temperature will give a small opening. The refrigerant now flows into the evaporator. As the refrigerant flows through the evaporator, air is blown across the matrix. Remember, heat will always travel from a warm object into a cooler one. Heat is transferred from the warm air and into the refrigerant, which turns into a vapor. The cold air is then blown into the passenger compartment. The vapor leaves the evaporator via a low pressure pipe, which, incidentally, is still very cold to touch. It now flows back into the compressor, where the whole cycle is repeated again. Let's move on now and take a look at the changes you'll find on the R134A system fitted to the Rover 800. A quick way to check if an R134A system is fitted to a Rover 800 
is to look for this yellow sticker on the bonnet locking platform. There are also identification marks on the compressor and the TXV and notches on all pipe connections. The main difference from a service point of view is that the charging ports are now a quick release type. This means you won't be able to connect your R12 charging trolley to this new system or vice versa. A new type of refrigerant oil has also been introduced. ND Oil 8. The mineral oils we used in the R12 systems won't dissolve in R134A. If you use the old type oil in the new system, you'll cause serious damage to the compressor. Be careful when using these new types of oil, as they'll damage the paintwork if you spill any. We also need new O-ring seals. This is because the new refrigerant oil reacts with the old O-rings, causing them to fail. To cope with this, a new seal material has been introduced. Obviously, one O-ring seal looks pretty much like another, so be very careful not to mix them up. The high and low pressure hoses are also made of a new material for similar reasons. ND Oil 8 is also very hygroscopic. This means it absorbs moisture very easily. This property has brought changes to the receiver dryer. The small bag of desiccant now contains zeolite, which absorbs more moisture than the silica gel found in the R12 receiver dryers. Another modification to the receiver dryer is the deletion of the fusible plug. This has been replaced by a pressure relief valve fitted on the compressor. In the event of a fault on the system, the relief valve limits the amount of refrigerant allowed to escape. The receiver dryer should be replaced every time the air conditioning system is opened. The change of refrigerants from R12 to R134A has brought an increase in system pressures. This is due to the fact that they boil or change state at different temperatures. This increase in pressure has, by necessity, brought about changes of its own. Firstly, the pressure switch values have been increased to 31.4 bar. An increase in pressure brings about an increase in temperature, so the condenser has been made more efficient. Finally, the opening characteristics of the TXV have been changed. Now let's take a quick look at the system fitted to Rover 200-400. Again, there's a yellow sticker on the bonnet locking platform. On 1.4s and 2 litres, you'll also find green labels on the pipework. Down the front here is the compressor. Now, unlike the Rover 800, the Rover 200-400 is fitted with a Sandon compressor. The refrigerant oil to use in this case is SP10. Again, be careful not to spill any on the paintwork. Like the Nippendenzo compressor, the Sandon compressor is fitted with a pressure relief valve. Again, this replaces the fusible plug on the receiver dryer. On Rover 200 and 400 models, the R12 and the R134A pipe connections are the same. That is, no notches, so be careful. Make sure you don't fit R12 components to an R134A system or vice versa. Like the Rover 800, the charging ports are also a quick release type. Apart from an increase in the working pressure of this system, it remains pretty much the same as before. Now let's take a look at some of the equipment you'll need. When working on these new systems, the normal safety rules apply. We'll start by looking at the leak detector. The leak detectors you've been using up until now aren't sensitive enough to detect an R134A leak. This has led to the introduction of a new leak detector. This one can actually be used for sensing both R134A and R12 simply by moving the switch on the top. If you suspect a leak in the system, remember that refrigerant is heavier than air, so always check the lower joint or component that you suspect to be faulty. As you can see, changes have also been made to the charging station. At first glance, it looks completely different to an R12 station, but it works along the same lines. We'll go through three operations using this combined unit from there. We'll start with the recovery process, removing the refrigerant from the system. Then we'll carry out the evacuation procedure. This is where we create a vacuum to boil off any moisture that may have got into the system. 
Finally, we'll go through the recharge sequence, putting the correct amount of refrigerant back into the system. If your equipment is from one of the other recommended manufacturers, Sun Electric, Seiku, or Salmon Diavia, the procedures we're about to go through may differ slightly, but the principles are the same. Always check in the operating manual and familiarize yourself with these highly sophisticated pieces of equipment before you use them. The first thing to do is connect the pipes to the charging ports and open the valves. Remember, blue for the low pressure side, red for the high pressure side. As you can see, these quick release connections really make the job a lot easier and quicker. Now we can open the high and low pressure valves on the control panel. Turn the power on and press the button marked recover. The screen will now display how much refrigerant you're removing from the system. The Rover 820 holds 650 grams. When it's finished, the display will show the CPL message, operation completed. When carrying out the recovery operation, the charging station also removes the refrigerant oil. This must be measured and replaced with new oil. New O-ring seals must also be fitted and the old oil discarded. If the correct amount of oil isn't put back, you'll cause serious damage to the system. For more information, check out the booklet that accompanies this program. Make sure you temporarily seal any open pipework when repairing or replacing components. This stops dirt or moisture from getting into the system. Now we can carry out the evacuation procedure. To do this, press the button marked vacuum. The display will now ask you for a length of time. The amount of time needed is dependent on the condition of the system. Check out the repair manual for the recommended times. Now press enter and then vacuum again. The display will now count down in seconds to zero. Again, when it's finished, it will display the CPL message. Before recharging, check the refrigerant doesn't contain any moisture. You can do this by checking the moisture indicator. It should be green. If not, it could mean the filter dryer inside the trolley needs replacing. Check out the operating manual for more details. Now we can recharge the system. The first thing to do is close the low pressure valves. Now press the charge button marked CHG. As we said earlier, the Rover 800 uses 650 grams. The scale on this unit is in kilograms, so we need to type in 0.65. Press enter and then the charge button again. The display will now count down to zero and then display the CPL message. To check it's been fully charged, run the system and use the gauges to check the high and low pressures with the compressor running. As you can see, the recovery, evacuation and recharge procedures are very simple and straightforward. But if you should forget, there's a quick guide printed on the top and side of the station itself. Let's move on and take a look at a condition you may come across in service. The customer has complained that the air given out by the air conditioning system isn't as cold as it should be. With the charging station connected up as we saw earlier, run the engine at Tico. Set the temperature control to maximum cooling and take a look in the sight glass. It's full of bubbles. This could indicate that there isn't enough refrigerant flowing through the system. To confirm if this is the cause of our problem, we need to look at the gauges on the charging trolley. Both gauges are reading far too low. The high pressure gauge is reading 8 kilograms per square centimeter, and the low pressure gauge only 0.5 kilograms per square centimeter. This is confirmation that the refrigerant level is low. The most likely cause of a low refrigerant level is a leak somewhere in the system. So use your leak detector to pinpoint it. Once you've found the source of the leak, 
you can first evacuate, then recharge the system. Let's take a look at another example. Again, the customer has complained that the air given out by the air conditioning system isn't as cold as it should be. If we look in the sight glass, it's clear. This could indicate a number of things. First, the condenser may not be cooling down the refrigerant enough, so check it isn't clogged with dirt or leaves. It could also mean that there is either too much refrigerant in the system or none at all. If there's no refrigerant in the system, the compressor won't operate and the gauges will read atmospheric pressure, that is, one kilogram per square centimetre. The most likely cause of no refrigerant at all is a leak somewhere in the system. If there's too much refrigerant in the system, the pressure gauges will be reading too high. The high pressure gauge is reading 20 kilograms per square centimetre and the low pressure gauge 4 kilograms per square centimetre. This confirms that there's too much refrigerant in the system. Because we don't know how much refrigerant there is in the system, we're going to have to draw it all out and recharge it with the correct amount. Well, that's a very brief look at two conditions you may come across in service. More in-depth fault diagnosis is given in the booklet that accompanies this program. Before we finish, let's recap on the main points of this program. Always observe the safety precautions when working on air conditioning systems. All cars fitted with an R134A system have a yellow sticker on the bonnet locking platform. Don't use R12 components and lubrication oil on an R134A system or vice versa. The Rover 800 R134A air conditioning system has different connections to an R12 system with notches for easy identification. The Rover 200-400 R134A system has the same connections as an R12 system and no notches, so be careful. The new charging stations allow R134A to be used again. Never fill an R134A air conditioning system with R12 or vice versa. Always use an R134A leak detector to locate a leak on a CFC-free air conditioning system. The high and low pressure charging ports have changed to a quick release type. And finally, from the 1st of April 1992, it's illegal to release CFCs or HCFCs into the atmosphere. The new R134A air conditioning system. A system that provides maximum cooling and comfort inside the car without damaging our planet. For a chance to win one of these superb prizes, complete the quiz that accompanies this program and return your answer sheets in the envelope provided.